If I shoot a basket, how many takes do you have in there? One of the best basketball players to ever play Southeast. Oh, come on. Ross is still one of the highest scores in City League history with 767 points, and his first Southeast basketball player to be selected to the first team All-City team two times in 1965 and 1966. In these three years at Southeast, he led them to a record of 52 wins with only 12 losses. At this time, we officially induct Ross Alexander into the Wichita Southeast Hall of Fame. <laughs> Thank you very much. Can we get some pictures here? And uh, friends for being here. If we say uh, my beautiful wife Paige and uh, all my children, my big boys Matt and Tim came from Los Angeles, so I really appreciate it and uh, I love you all. So I went to Curtis Junior High School and I got cut from the seventh grade basketball team because the day they had tryouts, I had to stay after school, and I'm sure it was a minor infraction. But I had to stay after school. By the time I got to the tryouts, they were doing left-handed layups. And I couldn't make a left-handed layup. And I still can't make a left-handed layup. But playing basketball in Wichita in the 60s was amazing. Wichita was a crazy basketball town. Uh, the Shockers went to the Final Four in 65. Uh, it was the Dave Stallworth era. He wore number 42, which is why I wore 42. I think we had 8,000 people at uh, the game when we played East High School uh, for the city championship. So it was a great time. And after Southeast, I played basketball at Wichita State. And a lot of people don't know this, but they actually retired my number. Uh, Xavier McDaniel also wore the number. I don't know if that had anything to do with it or not. But when I was a senior, my coach talked to me about maybe going to uh, the United States Military Academy at West Point to play basketball. And you know, the Vietnam War was kind of heating up and I didn't really know their first year coach. He was a 24 year old kid. I think his name was Bobby Knight. And I don't know whatever happened to him, but they also had a point guard by the name of Mike Krzyzewski. I don't know what happened to him either. But uh, there's some people I'd like to thank, probably starting with my dad who built a golden backyard for me and put a night light out there so I could flip on the light, go out and play in the dark and pretend that I was Oscar Robertson hitting a last second shot. And I had great teammates that got me the ball. I had a great coach in Jim McNerney. He was gonna be here, but he's 85 years old. And he called me yesterday and told me he was having some health problems. and couldn't be here. In fact, he said he couldn't even go to his son's basketball game tonight. Uh, he's got a son that plays high school basketball. Not a great grandson, a son, and he's 85 years old. So he belongs in some Hall of Fame somewhere, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but he told me a lot of things, obviously. A couple things stick out. One day before practice, he uh, came to me and said, you need to shoot more. Okay, I can do that. So it was a few games later, I had 24 points at halftime, and he told the team, keep giving the ball to Alexander. I don't care if he scores 50. Well, I didn't, but coach did a lot for me, and I really appreciate it, and I wish him the best and a speedy recovery. There's one story I want to tell. Uh, I led the city in scoring when I was a junior. My senior year, I was second all year to Mike Holloman, who played at East. He was a great player. He was three-time All-City. He was All-State, honorable mention, junior college All-American. He was really tough. So the Eagle ran a story before our last game that he was averaging 19.1 points a game, and I was averaging 19. So it was all going to boil down to the last game of the year. And back in those days, we had triple headers at uh, the Roundhouse. Coke Arena now. I think the first game started like at 4.45. And that particular night, East High uh, played the first game and we played the third game. But I wasn't gonna know what Mike did in his game. I mean, nobody was gonna text me and tell me. So I was in the tunnel getting ready to take the floor for our game and a sports writer for the Wichita Eagle came up to me and said, 
you need 12 points to win the scoring title. Well, a couple things about that. One, I was kind of surprised that he would do that. I don't know why, I just was. But the other thing is, 12 points seem really doable. So, but I didn't totally trust his math, so I scored 22. <laughs> but uh, I thought it'd be fun. I haven't seen Mike Holloman for 52 years to look him up and see how he's doing. And you know, when you're almost 70 years old, you gotta be careful about that because you never know what you're gonna find. But I found his son on Facebook and his son gave me his phone number, so I called him and he couldn't have been nicer. We had a nice talk. I asked him if he'd like to come tonight and he actually said he'd be honored to. And I said, well, are you gonna bring your wife? He said, I've been married for 45 years. Wherever I go, she goes. <laughs> so I'm real happy Mike and uh, Stephanie are here tonight. Let's give them a hand. <laughs> so I want to thank the committee for this. I really appreciate it. It's a great honor. I know they probably weren't even born when I was playing, so it's nice that they dusted off the archive. Uh, so with that, I'll just say thank you very much and go Buffs. Thank you.